Okay. I think everything is good. Let me make sure. Yep. Yep. Microphone is good. Got the royalty-free synthwave going on in the background so that I don't get a copyright strike when I put this to YouTube. And we got one viewer, which I think is just Christian Hansen, my uh, a specific friend of mine. But hopefully we get some more people. Regardless. Um, okay. So I have a lot of board games. You can see most of them over here, but also... There's a bunch of them over there as well. Whoops, mic stand fell off the thing. Hold on. Hold on. That was a bad maneuver. Just sit. Ugh. Come on, come on. There we go. Just gotta tighten that back on. Sorry for the squeaking noises. There we go. Ah. Not even a technical difficulty, that was a mechanical difficulty. Okay, so yeah, I have nearly 100 board games. Um, that's including major expansions or different, like, the base games. So there's some minor expansions I didn't include in that, which would take me well over 100. I, I have quite a few of those as well. But I need some place to store them. Um, so... I have uh, a lot of these cloth storage cubes. Um, I, I posted on Board Game Geek a forum post, and I was just like, what are good non-display storage options? Because all, all of the options I see when I look up how to store your board games, they just talk about, like, the Kallax or, like, bookshelves or, like, the Billy or, like, some other stuff that just, like, leaves them out. But it's like, I have a dusty house... And I do not have room for, like, shelves like that, so that's not an option for me. So I was like, well, what can I do? And most people were just like, get the collax, but throw a sheet over it. Get the collax and put it in a closet. And that was just so, so unhelpful. So I finally decided on these cloth storage cubes. I have uh, a few of them here. We got ones about this size, which fold out to about that. So I got two of those. I got two of these, which are basically those other ones, just uh, about, let's see, a little narrower and a lot taller. Got two of those. Then I got four of these ones, which can hold like decent medium sized games. So I got a lot of those. And especially for this, I got these these ones I think are actually gonna be the best option they got a place for a label they got metal handles and a lid and I measured them out they are big enough to hold even the longest board games at 16 inches so you can hold a full monopoly board on its side in one of these so I got four of those they were pricey but it, it should be worth it they're definitely good these other ones I got from like Dollar Tree and they're not very good um oh hey thanks for following Christian um I'm surprised you hadn't already. <laughs> it's fine. It, I really... I'm getting as many followers and such as I can, but, you know, that's just the grind of streaming or other social media. <sighs> Sorry, just let me take a quick sip from my comically large water bottle. All right. Um, I have the monitor for my video over there and the camera here. I mean, obviously the camera here. So if you see me looking over there, it's to see A, that I'm framed up and B, that, um, uh, that chat, see chat, as I see uh, Christian just posted up. Thanks, thanks for that. Um, let me know if the background music is too loud or anything. It seems like it's at a good level visually right now, but I don't have any monitoring headphones in, and I can adjust it. However, um, it's just playing through speakers from back there. But yeah, I'm going to go through all of these, uh, probably dust some of them, so I have a microfiber cloth, and uh, just kind of like say a few words about each game, you know? Some of them I'll have more to say about than others, but I, I love board games a lot, as you can probably tell by my pretty big collection although as far as like board game people go this is kind of a modest collection a lot of board game people will have like two three four hundred um i remember uh quinn's 
from Shut Up and Sit Down, he he would keep any games that he wasn't planning on playing but didn't want to get rid of in his attic. And he was like, I had 300 games when I finally sold a bunch of them off. So, yeah, not that point yet, but maybe someday. All right, so I'm going to get started. Let's see here. All right. Um, oh, does this not have a bottom? Ah, it does. It's just in the lid. Cool. Ah, I hadn't actually taken these out of the box yet. Oh, that's a tight fit. Hold on, hold on. Let me actually turn this sideways. Okay, that's that's a good sign. That means it'll actually hold in there. All right, so that's the first one. In fact, let's put, oh, they're fairly heavy, which is good. That means they're high quality. Put those down so that I don't have to block the camera. Uh, put these ones down as well. So my goal here is to, you know, be able to store all of these, but then like actually kind of organize them. So I'll have, you know, all the ones that I generally just play with family in one box so that those can be out in the living room. And then like some of the more intense ones are the ones I mostly have just for collection purposes tucked away. So let's see. <laughs> Yeah, what a collection. I mean, it's it's pretty big. You know, I got a lot of stuff. Um, some of this technically isn't mine. You know, it's like my roommates from like a past marriage that got left here or like ones we got for the family. But like in general, that's that's about 100 games. So let's get into it. Uh, first, I'm going to do the larger games, which we'll start with. Monopoly Cheaters Edition, which I got just because of the gimmick. It's basically just regular Monopoly. Uh, yeah, that fits perfectly into this box. Awesome. Um, which I then recently got just Monopoly, which they've changed up a lot of the pieces. They got like T-Rex and Penguin and uh, Cat in it now. But I got that so I could play with family over webcam. Uh, and it's pretty good for that so I'm I'm glad that I got that but Monopoly is not a great game I don't I don't think I'm breaking any ground by by saying that but yeah no it's a very tedious game I played it with family over webcam we got about to the halfway point after two hours and I was doing it like poker dealer style where I'd like roll the dice move a piece you pay rent roll the dice move a piece you pay rent and like even going that fast which is not how fast it'd go if you were actually playing it in person with people it was still going so slow so like I do not recommend Monopoly but it's only 20 bucks and my family all knows it so it's it gets the family together I guess then we have Labyrinth Labyrinth is the one from my childhood it's a Ravensburger game I'm a huge fan of Ravensburger really uh, but it's it's a really fascinating game because it's pretty simple it's definitely more of a kids game but as you can probably see from the back here, whoops, that's upside down. From the back here, it's basically a board of tiles and you push a tile in one side, the tile falls out the other side, next player gets that tile, so you're just constantly moving this maze around as you play, which I think is one of the funnest mechanics I ever encountered as a kid playing board games. Now I've, I've you know, run into a lot of even funner mechanics than that, but like that was the first one where I was like, yeah, Board game's gonna be really cool. And Classic Risk, which I think I got as a gift. Uh, I mean, it's just like the most pure General Blotto, kind of like Colonel Blotto, I don't know. But basically put guys on the map, fight, see who wins kind of game. It's fine, it takes a while. Uh, the setup takes way too long is usually why I don't end up playing it. And there's many digital versions that work a lot better. But yeah, I, I, I enjoy Risk from time to time, so I still have a copy. And this is probably my heaviest game. Oh, this, in like more ways than one, is Oath, which is my favorite board game. Oath is the most recent release from Leader Games. Um, 
and it's just an awesome 4x game it's super complicated so i wouldn't necessarily recommend it for someone just getting into games but if you want a really dense game that has like awesome legacy elements where game to game the story like evolves and keeps going and evolves and it's it's wonderful i love oath so much and yep this is a kickstarter version which means it's got a bunch of metal coins and it is very heavy but it's worth it I, I love that game so much and i got it for cheaper by doing through kickstarter so not too bad all right uh trying to think what could fit there's like one little sliver of space here what could fit in there hmm I'm trying to think well, I got a lot of chunkier games let's see that's like two inches um hmm I could maybe fit free market but I kind of want to keep all my tabletop RPG stuff together. Uh, maybe we should do some smaller ones. Let's see. Um, oh, I know. Hold on. Another leader game, Vast, The Haunted Hallways. This is a expansion for Vast, The Mysterious Manor. Uh, pretty fun. I'm. Uh, I love leader games. I'm not a huge fan of Vast itself. It, it feels a little fiddly. There's a lot of different characters, and they're like it's asymmetrical to the point where you basically do have to learn all of them. I, I really preferred how Root handled asymmetry. So, you know, I'm, I'm glad I got this. I do plan to get all of Vast's, you know, stuff, all of the leader game stuff, since they're my favorite company that makes board games. But as it stands. Not a huge fan of Vast. There we go, perfect fit. Nice, all right, that's everything pretty tight in there. I could probably fit something to the side here. Uh, oh, this might be perfect, let me see. Nope, a little too thick. We'll get back to this, but it's a, a Five Nights at Freddy's board game. I'll come back to that when I actually find a spot for it. Maybe, maybe silk? Ah, no, it's just a little too wide. Hmm. I might just have to leave that space for now. Ah, uh, that, that's not the worst. Um, let me... See, there's definitely a, quite a bit of space, like about that much space up top here. Um, ooh, my chat's freaking out. Why does it do? Oh, it's because my VPN was on. I can't, can't necessarily do anything about that. Let me see if I could maybe, uh, I think I could maybe fix that. Uh, I think. Hmm, maybe if I de-visit. Okay, that refreshed it at least. Hmm. I think that did it. I don't know. Um, hold on, I'm gonna turn my music down. It's clearly bumping a little too much. There we go. Okay, um, so what can I fit on top? That's all of my like big 16 inch games, so. Uh, oh, that would be perfect. Uh, whoa. That was a stupid idea. Those could have all just fallen straight to the ground. I'm glad that worked out. Um, that was like when you pulled the tablecloth and all the dishes stay where they are. Uh, so, this one is Beyond the Sun, which I haven't had a chance to play yet in this version, but when I went to PAX Unplugged 2018, I believe, uh, like two and a half years ago, um, I actually got to do a preview of this with Dennis K. Chan himself. He ran the preview and it was super fun. Um, so, yeah, I'm glad I got this and this is like my 
one of my other really heavy games. There's a lot of stuff in here, and it's it's not quite 16 inch, but it's it's pretty close. Oh no! Oh please, tell me, is that good enough? Uh, it's sticking up a tiny touch. Hmm. You know, I think they'll be okay. I, th I think they'll be fine. So let's get a lid on that one. And, oh geez, this is heavy. Oh. All right, that's one box down. And like, what, six games? So, got a long way to go. Let's get another box out. Ooh. Yeah. Tuck King away. Okay. Now the other thing is that these are 16 by 12 inch boxes, a little more than 12 inches, which is also perfect because most of these very, uh, which way? Very large games over there will also fit going uh, that direction, like back and forth. So perfect. Let's um, let's set that up. All right. Mechanica. Mechanica is fine. Um, you know, it's it's not a super exciting game. It's basically like a machine building kind of game where you build basically programs. But you can see here, it has this little wheel inside. And when you turn the wheel, it moves the jigsaw pieces. And when they hit the end of the wheel, they automatically drop into the box. I love that. That alone makes this game worthwhile. That is one of the funnest mechanics I've ever heard of in a game. And it, almost everybody I tell that to is like, oh, oh, that sounds fun. And it is. I, I, I enjoy it a lot. I've actually done quite a few streams of it, so you could go check on Iggy Kid Twitch Archive, which is linked down below on the, the browser version. I have a stream of Mechanica. Maybe even two? I don't remember. It's been a while. Then we have Neroshima Hex. 3.0. This game used to be popular because it was available basically on all cell phones. Like you could get it on iOS and Android and it was a pretty fun app for free. They had a free version at least. Um, unfortunately, it's not on iOS anymore. It's still on Android, which is pretty good. But um, yeah, it's just a pretty, pretty straightforward kind of war game. Uh, definitely very strategic. Definitely a lot of moving pieces, but I, I, I like it a lot. Um, I haven't had a chance to play this particular version. Uh, one thing I think is fun is it's got the huge Watch It Played logo on the side because they're so proud that they got Watch It Played to uh, do a tutorial for this. Which, you know, I mean, I'm sure it's something of an honor, but like, I, it's not like anything that pretty much every game doesn't get as it comes out. Hold on a sec. Okay, there we go. Had a notification in the way. How long have I been going? 21, that's it? Oh, wow. This is going to take, take a bit. Ah, got to stay hydrated. Very hydrated. Uh, next up. Bunny Kingdom. This is a very straightforward gra uh, drafting and worker placement game, and it's it's pretty fun. I I enjoy it a lot. It's very math heavy, so if you don't like doing a good amount of like uh, multiplication and addition and counting and stuff, you might not like it very much. But like, it's pretty affordable, and it's got you know great great artwork, and it's made by Richard Garfield, the guy who made Magic: The Gathering. So that's pretty cool. All right, that's three in there. 
Dead of Winter, a crossroads game. This game is pretty solid, sort of like, uh, how do you put it? Um, Like hidden role co-op kind of stuff. It has standees, which I'm not like a huge fan of the little like cardboard standees, but the ones in this are pretty high quality and thick and the storytelling is pretty solid. So I, I enjoy that one. But it's it's a lot of setup. You gotta shuffle like seven or eight decks, and that's like that just takes so long that we don't end up bothering most times. To be clear, don't end up playing a lot of these games, unfortunately, because we rarely have time to play, you know, a hundred games. So I get a lot of solo experience out of it. But hopefully we can get a game night going sometime soon, you know? Alright, what's next? One of my favorites, Village. Village is a worker placement game where it has a mechanic of time. As time goes on, your different workers that you have out in the world die because it's like a multi-generational game. And you just try and do as much as you can over the entire history of your family. And I love that. I like this game a lot. Uh, unfortunately, I'm pretty much the only person in my family who does, so I don't get a ton of play of it. But I've played it online a few times, and you know, I I do like it a lot. I hope to get the expansion sometime that adds like a pub and uh, a port, I think? Or it's like an inn and a port, I don't remember. Hmm. All right, so those five fill up this box. So let's pop a lid on this. Hold on, I'll grab it by the metal handles. All right, that makes two. And because of the lids, I'm probably gonna stack those at some point, but the table back there, not tall enough. This table that I'm doing all of this on, this is tall enough, but uh, I'm gonna have to move it back there after the stream, because this is the one that had the mic stand on it and everything. So let's get another box out. All right, it's it's a tight fit for the bottom of that, but that's a good thing. It means that it's you know not going to be all loosey goosey later on during storage. Hmm. Ah. Oh, that's my rug that's catching on the chair. Okay. Uh, next we have Monopoly Gamer. I really enjoy this over regular Monopoly. Um, it comes with some pretty cool, you know, miniatures of different characters. That's Mario. Ooh, he looks very sinister in this lighting. Um, but yeah, it's got most of the characters. You can buy more in like, they're called power packs. It's basically you get the character and their character card. Uh, so I got all of those. <laughs> so I have a full set. This is the collector's edition, which comes with these awesome Mario coins, like actual little plastic Mario coins. I love these so much, and they like they made it worth it for certain. Uh, there's also a Sonic Monopoly Gamer and an Overwatch Monopoly Gamer, and I believe a Mario Kart Monopoly Gamer, but they don't have the collector's edition, so I haven't bothered. I also don't really care for Overwatch. Sonic, I think, is pretty cool, but like I don't. I already got the Mario one. That's that's all I need. That's enough Monopoly for me. I have three versions of Monopoly. That's plenty. Fallout. Fallout the board game. This game sucks. This is not a very good game. It's really unfortunate. I actually did a video on my YouTube channel, Iggy and the Ape, which you can find linked down below in the browser version, um, where I explained exactly why 
this game is so kind of garbage. But the, I always, I believe I said it's like it'd be a much better co-op game. And then they released an expansion, Atomic Bonds, that makes it a co-op game. So we haven't had a chance to try that out yet, but hopefully that will fix some things. You know, it adds like fast travel, it adds co-op scenarios and stuff. So I, I hope that makes it a little bit, you know, a little bit more interesting. Let me just refresh the Twitch chat so that, yeah, the VPN means that it keeps go like refreshing the chat and po popping up another welcome to the chat room, welcome to the chat room. So that's annoying, but I appreciate you guys who are chatting when you do. Um, all right, so Fallout Monopoly Gamer, not a solid box having those two in there. Let's put something good in there. Um, I'm uh, gonna have to go back on that immediately because the only other games that will fit are this one, Time Stories, which is also not great. Screwed up a fu Oh yeah, no, the Fallout board game. There's another one that's more like strategy based specifically, but the Fallout board game, ah, it's long, it's confusing, there's way too many pieces. It's really unfortunate because Fantasy Flight, who actually made the Fallout board game, they make some pretty solid other games, but yeah, the Fallout board game, not great. I mean, I made a whole video about it, um, but you know, I, I also plan to do like full reviews on that that caliber, um, in some amount of time. I don't know when. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. One of the points I make in the video is that it's basically t trying to take the Bethesda Fallout's and kind of fuse them with the original Fallout's with the like tabletop kind of thing and it's just it's it ain't chocolate and peanut butter it does not it's not two great flavors that go together unfortunately ah uh, it's really unfortunate but the co-op version might be better they did do also a new california expansion which unfortunately they didn't put a new vegas in there so there's like new vegas monsters but they didn't put a new vegas scenario which is a crime considering new vegas is the best one although i guess that's because it was a different studio i think right i'm pretty sure um but yeah follow board game not great really not great uh, another thing that's really not great Time Stories, this is like trying to be, it's like a point and click adventure game basically. And I like that idea, but like most point and click adventure games, there's not a lot of replayability. The g base game only comes with one scenario and there are expansions, which I have one that I've never cracked into. Um, but yeah, not a huge fan of Time Stories. It was a little too expensive for what it is. Uh, I like the idea though, so you know, maybe I'll revisit it and hopefully one of the other scenarios is better. Ah, Thornwatch! This is a Penny Arcade game. You can probably tell it's Mike Krahulik's artwork. Um, it's like a fantasy setting about like these spirits that watch over the woods and it's supposed to be like a fusion of a tabletop RPG and a strategy game and from everything I've heard it didn't go well but I haven't actually had a chance to play it yet so I cannot say for certain that it's not that good I just hear that it's not that great but I'm happy to have it just for the the artwork you know and I got it on sale so I can't complain too much Ooh, it's very wide we have enough room for one more game in that box looks like so let me let me see what would fit Ah, here's one. It's a bit smaller of a box. Dune, the board game. This is the re-release by Gale Force 9 from 2019. Um, this is like a classic, you know. It's it's a full-on war game, very thematic. So, like, the, it literally has stuff like Tlaloxu tanks and, you know, the Bene Gesserit are one of the guys. Uh, you can be the Atreides, the Harkonnen, the Fremen, like, the whole thing is incredibly thematic and it like it does feel like being in the dune world and like 
doing all sorts of combat and stuff, but mm, I don't know. I haven't had it with any huge teams yet. As far as games from this time, like this is way ahead of its time. You didn't see games like this until many, many decades later. And I like it. I like this production of it. Mm. The uh, edge is a little dinged up. That's unfortunate. Um, it's a very long game. And it's going to be hard for me to uh, convince anybody to do it. Because even uh, my dad, who's like a huge sci-fi fan, is not exactly a fan of Dune. So, yeah. I, I, I can admit, Dune has problems as a story, as a property. And the game has problems. But I still really like it. And I, yeah, I don't know. It, it's going to be hard to get like a nice chunky game of that done someday. But for now, it will sit right here with uh, four other mediocre games. Hmm. feel like there's some kind of poetic irony to that. Whatever. Let's get a lid on it. And tuck it back. Ooh, running out of space behind me. I don't want to put anything in a place where uh, <clears throat> where it's going to get hit by my chair. Rolling back. Uh, let me refresh the chat real quick. There we go. And get some water. Uh, hydrate, people. Be sure to drink your water. Actually, I'm going to have a little bit of throat spray. Ah, okay, that makes things better. Last big box. Whoop. So this is the last of these big boxes, but I already got pretty much all of the large games I'd want to fit in here in the other three. So this might be full of some, uh, some smaller games. Okay. Tuck that all in. There we go. All right, we're going to move on to the, I think they're 10 inch, I want to say. I don't know for certain. Um, I haven't measured most of these. Whew, yeah, we still have this whole table to crack into. Most of the ones behind me are done, so that's that's definitely good. But yeah, let's, let's keep cracking into it. Um, I think I'll go into real quick the uh, the ones that I'm going to more or less leave out, you know, because they are the family games I'll basically keep in the living room. Oh, yeah, and I guess we have, like, you know, we have one of those big sets of, like, a hundred classic games. It's, like, a bunch of just garbage pieces. Uh, one of those glass chess sets that are terrible because it's so hard to tell the different pieces apart because it's, like, one player plays frosted glass and the other plays clear glass, and it's, like, great real easy to read um you can't even tell like the squares uh i don't know yet the your yetis and your spaghettis your connect fours your hi-ho cherios all the like little little kid games which we're probably gonna get rid of because uh the littlest kid we know is like eight now and he's he's too big for the counting games oh geez <laughs> shaking my head okay but we have clue just classic clue um if you haven't played it since you were a kid, they, they changed things up a little bit. Instead of uh, Mrs. White, Mrs. White, the, the maid, uh, they've replaced her with Dr. Orchid, who's a pink piece. But that's about it. Otherwise, it's just Clue. Clue is a very dull game because basically you just get the information you need and eventually you narrow it down. That's it. It's honestly the fact that you move around makes it like so much longer when you could just basically turn it into some kind of deduction game that'd be more fun, which would be closer to like werewolf. But I digress. Clue is, you know, it's Clue. Nothing special. Uh, next. Hmm. What else do we got? Uh, in a pickle, which is a game right game. Uh, game right makes. 
trying to remember. There's like one specific game that they make that's really fun, but In a Pickle is just like a card game that has a bunch of different random stuff, and it's basically you have to put down things that it would be inside of. So their example is like a baby would be in a bathtub, which is in a house, and that house is in Hollywood. Or like juice would be in a pickle, the pickle's in a supermarket, the supermarket's in a parking lot. You know, and then it's supposed to be a party game of like, well, explain how that is inside of that. But, uh, uh, but you know, it's it's fine. I played it once. It's a party game. Rarely a fan of party games. I, I do have a couple that are pretty fun. But, yeah, this is... It's whatever. Um. Hmm. Oh, yeah. I just did an unboxing of this. It's Animal Upon Animals. It's just like a uh, dexterity game like Jenga. You try and stack up all of the dinosaur, the wooden dinosaur pieces, without knocking it over. And uh, that's about it. Just real simple. I think this is like a kid's game. So like, yeah, ages four and up. So this will go outside in the living room for the family. Although I might do like a stream of that for fun, but I, I don't have high hopes that it's going to be anything that spectacular. Um, speaking of which, Jenga. This is like two sets of mini Jenga. Um, yeah, I, I didn't like the boxes, so I just threw it in a bag. Jenga is good for other games as like components. There's like a tabletop RPG called Dread, where you're basically instead of rolling dice, you do Jenga pulls, like poke it and then you pull it from the other side. Um, you do Jenga pulls, and so it gets wobblier and wobblier as the tension rises in the story, which is fun. So it's good to have it for that and stuff. But otherwise, it's it's Jenga. You all played it. trying to find one that I'm going to keep. You know what? I'm going to go move over to this table, despite, you know, I wanted to finish up that table first. Let's see. No. Ah, here we go. Tiny Sword Smash! Might have peeked the mic there. Whoops. Uh, Tiny Sword Smash is a spinoff of the game Tiny Swords by Brian Wolf. It's basically like a game that's supposed to emulate Smash Brothers. You just kind of like push, you push other characters and you take more damage and every time you take damage you go flying further off and if you get knocked off, you lose. So it's like a strategy version of Smash and it's got like, you know, cute little pumpkin pants guy, this little like pudding guy, all sorts of little cute stuff. It's a bit difficult to wrap your head around all the mechanics. So if you played this a lot, it would probably be really fun, but considering you only ever play it now and then, it's, you know, a bit confusing. Really high production, though. This is, like, a really high-quality glossy box, and, like, the board, which is just a, like, grid, is, like, super nice. Um, it's just game-wise. It's like, yeah, it's fine, you know. Ah! Fallout New California expansion. Uh, this is interesting because the expansion isn't in here. A tackle box full of the Fallout pieces is in here because otherwise it would be a nightmare to play this game with all the different piles of tokens. So yeah, we got like, you know, a Nuka-Cola cap. That's a, a one. We got the blue one there. Um, we got, you know, a Vats dice that has different stuff. We got all sorts of miniatures, you know, power armor guy. All that, like, that's the thing, is the production value of this game is still good. That's why I don't regret buying it, because it's worth it just for the pieces alone. It's just not a very good game, is the big problem, so. Ends up being pretty underwhelming. But, uh, yeah, I keep all that in there, and then all of the expansion and base game stuff I keep in the big box, which I put, you know, down there-ish. Uh, I'm putting them all in their sides, by the way, so that if I ever want to find one, I just have to open it up and look in. Hi, Cent. It's been a while. I, I know I haven't been streaming Oath for quite some time. I did do a Clockwork Prince game uh, last week. Um, yeah, video game board games, not always great, but that actually reminds me, I have a really good one here. 
Hold on. Most of them are not good, but Minecraft Builders and Biomes is really, really good. It is like a shockingly good game. Uh, but Ravensburger again, one of my favorite companies because I just always love their stuff. Uh, yeah, this is this didn't need to be that good because it's like just Minecraft sort of stuff, but like it's surprisingly really, really good. It's got like this whole thing with like, um, you can kind of see on the back, it's like a cube of like big wooden cubes that are like huge and chunky and you have to like do one layer at a time and each round ends as you finish off each of the layers. So it's got like this resource management thing where you can kind of like control how long the game goes and like there's like you can like focus on combat, you could focus on building and they're all valid strategy. Oh, it's really good. Really surprisingly good. Um, you miss the Clockwork Prince stream? That's fine. I, I plan to do more. Uh, the thing is, I had it on this table and this table, and that was not enough space. Oath is such a large game that if I do it, I have to pull out the board gaming table, excuse me, which is like seven feet long, and that's, that's such a pain. I won't do it super often, but I do plan to, uh, I, I, I do plan to like do more board game stuff in the future here. So, let's put that one away. Um, uh, ooh, another really fun one. Godzilla Tokyo Clash, which is like a fun co game, which are like hit or miss. I really don't like the packaging because they have these like round stickers rather than plastic wrap, which is less wasteful. But then you can't pull them off without damaging the box. So I try to split them, but that damages the box most times too. Uh, it's high quality stuff and like you get some awesome miniatures of you know the four guys so I appreciate it for that at least and can I read any of this yet no I've been doing Japanese and Duolingo but I can only read hiragana this is all uh, uh katakana which I'm, I'm working on that to, or katakana and kanji but there, I don't see any hiragana on here ah oh, tears but yeah that, one, that one's fun it's more of a card game with like placement than anything similar to bunny kingdom you're ba more playing with the cards and then just placing stuff down to keep track than anything but it's pretty fun and I love moving around some godzillas you know ah stay hydrated all of you out there stay hydrated then we have, uh, I'll do these two together. Whoa. Betrayal at House on the Hill, classic. You can get this at Walmart, so you probably know it. It's pretty fun. I feel like the most fun part is when you get to the haunt and then it's over so fast that it's like really disappointing, but I still love it. I still play it as often as I can. That's one of those ones that anytime someone's like, let's play Betrayal, I'm like, yeah, let's play Betrayal. I, I want to see what's coming up. Uh, more recently, Scooby-Doo Betrayal at Mystery Mansion, which is just Betrayal at House on the Hill, but Scooby-Doo. Um, th the rules are a little different to make it a bit more kid-friendly and the production is way crappier. It's like much lower quality pieces. Instead of miniatures, you get like little uh, cardboard standees and like the little tabs to keep track of your stats are like really tight. They like wreck the edges on the player cards, which is really unfortunate. Um, but still fun, still betrayal, but you know, Scooby-Doo, which I'm a fan of. Whoop. And then there's a big old gap along the side here. I could probably fit something in. Yeah, I might be able to fit two actually if I'm clever about this. Let's see. Hmm. Yeah, let's try a couple of Nara games. Hmm. These might fit. Let's find out. Carcassonne, classic. Anytime someone wants to play Carcassonne, I am down. And anytime I want to introduce somebody to Euro games uh, or like any kind of non-monopoly game, 
Carcassonne is where I start. It's really simple, real quick to learn, real quick to understand. And yeah, no, even the most monopoly laden people are, just have a great time. It's just a real fun game. So always love to have a copy of that in my collection. Oh, come on, please, please fit. Uh, nope, that's not gonna fit. Maybe on top? Nope, too tall. Put that to the side. Uh, and then Monster Crunch. Monster Crunch, as you can tell, Count Chocula game. It's got all the guys, including the uh, Fruit Brute and Yummy Mummy, who were very short-lived. But uh, it's just like a pretty simple kind of casino-style game. And you, you get a lot of really nice cards, and I love the artwork more than anything. So I mostly got it because I, I love Count Chocula as like a character. Like the monster cereals in general, I think, are super cute. So I, I got it for that. And the game itself is fine. It's not like super good. It's not like t like intolerable. It's just it's pretty good. I, I, I don't mind. Still gotta figure out what to fit in here. Let's try Villainous. Disney Villainous. A lot of people have probably played this, but it's a it's a card game where you play as Disney villains and you can kind of affect each other, but it's more or less like a solitaire game. You can kind of throw a wrench in someone else's plan, but you could probably play it alone. I think, yeah. Pretty much. You know, some actions you wouldn't be able to do, but, like, it wouldn't matter that much. But, uh, yeah, I I find this game pretty fun. It's, um, it, it depends on which character you play. Some of them are definitely a lot stronger than others. But, you know, once again, the components are super nice. Come on, fit, fit. Right in the center. That makes it, ooh, bows out a little bit. But I think that would be okay. Mm, what if I put it on top? No, dang it. Ah, that doesn't fit either. Come on, what do I have that's skinny? Um, no, I want to keep RPGs together. Hmm. Hmm. I'm gonna tuck this one away for now, actually. I'm gonna tuck that away and move on to some of the smaller boxes. And uh, if I find something that would fit, I will slip it into there. So uh, I'll probably be trying some of those as time goes on. So let's move on to one of these smaller gray boxes. This is a Dollar Tree box, literally just cardboard on the bottom. Very flimsy, can easily tear the fabric, but they can hold a lot of games. Uh, they're surprisingly large. Uh, so I'll just put in some of the ones I already did. So Villainous right there. Hmm. I'm going to leave it out for now because I have to punch out the tiles still, but Cascadia, this is a game, it's just like a tile laying game, sort of similar to Carcassonne or like King Domino. Um, you lay down the stuff, you clean different stuff, and yeah, it's set in the Pacific Northwest, and that's where I'm from and grew up, so I really love it for that, but uh, yeah, I'm going to leave it out for now so I can punch out the tiles, but then I'll probably go into one of these... One of those. Um, oh, wait a minute. Do I? Where is it at? There's a specific one that I think would fit. Ah. Just knocked a bunch of them down. Whoops. Um, but here we go. The Binding of Isaac, Four Souls. This is the gold box, which I got actually with the Tapeworm Kickstarter, um, rather than, you know, the Binding of Isaac Kickstarter. But I did back at the Big Boy box tier um, the new expansion, 
and once the backer kit opens I'm gonna get the last expansion so I'll have everything and I'll fit into there but yeah this is the gold box so original game plus the Kickstarter exclusive expansion I paid a lot for this just this box specifically which says first edition so I think it's worth it I don't know maybe it isn't not for me to decide it's for fate to decide and I was wrong it doesn't fit dang it <laughs> ah this is hard this is real hard you know a lot of the larger games are all of similar sizes but then when you get to the smaller games they get to be weirdly shaped hmm um Sinister Six. This one, like a lot of different games I end up getting from uh, GameStop, it's got like a big old razor slash down the side, which sucks. Uh, I got this one purely for aesthetic because the game itself sucks. It's a real bad game. Do not recommend it. Um, the couple of times I've played it, it's like, yeah, no, it's pretty, pretty ridiculous. Uh, but it's got all these awesome little Spider-Man villain fists and like pretty fun artwork so it's good for that but I probably will never play it again um oh and I just realized it says knowledge of English required which I've never seen on one of these but yeah oh yeah throw it throwing out games you don't like ah, I'm not at the point where I can do that quite yet but I I'm looking to sell a couple of them but unfortunately the ones I want to sell are the ones that aren't very good that people don't want so I don't I, I can't sell them <laughs> you know I I try but nobody wants to buy so we'll go into those in a little bit um so this one I'm hanging on to for aesthetics but I probably will sell this at some point especially now that I'm you know up to a hundred games um sorry Oh, that's a real jangly. Uh, it's sorry. It's just like weird parcheesy. It's the families, so. That will go with the family ones. Uh, let's see. Yeah, no blind buys is probably a good idea, especially now with like, you know, Tabletopia, TTS. Uh, for all these different ways to play games digitally, it's like it's pretty easy to test play games before you actually get them. Um, I'm I'm getting to be more like that, or like I at least look around to see what people are saying and feel like you know, do I actually vibe with that or do I disagree? But yeah, I, I've become more discerning. A lot of these I got when I was still like the Fallout board game was one of the first big like chunky board games I bought and. It ended up being not a great buy, but I have gotten quite a few plays out of it, so I don't know. And I'm going to try it again with Atomic Bonds. It might be pretty decent. Ah, hydration. All right, what next? Um, hmm. Oh, here's one. This is the limited edition, so it doesn't actually say... But this is the Adventure Zone Bureau of Balance game, which I haven't had a chance to play yet. This is the limited edition, so it comes with uh, a nice little foldable fantasy Costco card holder and like these huge chunky dice, which you can see in the unboxing I did on my personal channel. And uh, yeah, it has the lovely void fish in foil on there, which is really gorgeous. I'm not a huge fan of this art style that they have for the various characters, but I don't mind it too much, and I love I love the Adventure Zone so much. I've been re-listening through, um, and yeah, it, it, it takes a while. It's I feel like it doesn't really hit its stride until like the fourth arc, but I would highly recommend the Adventure Zone to to anyone out there who's even remotely interested in D and D stuff. I cried so much re-listening to the finale it's it's just such a beautiful story once you get past all the dick jokes in the beginning um 
that also like amnesty which i i'm i'm just cracking into amnesty again which is my preferred arc i i love amnesty so much it's honestly one of my favorite stories of all time and uh yeah that one oh there's gonna be tears there's gonna be tears i haven't listened to graduation in ether c yet i'm i'm just kind of behind because uh you know two hours of podcast is a uh, a lot but now that i'm going to the gym more and i go to the gym for about two hours i can keep up like a lot a lot more i got a lot more podcast time um, especially now that i'm walking to the gym need a, something to occupy me in the hot georgia sun uh what next that one i don't know if i'd want to put that one in uh all these small ones will go in the small boxes. Oh, maybe that? Yeah. Uh, I think this one, no. No, this one's too thick. Hold on. Hmm. No, no, no. Um. Ah. Oh, actually, I think this one. Yeah, this should fit perfectly. Rick and Morty, Anatomy Park, the game. Uh, this game is okay. Played it once. Back when I was watching Rick and Morty, kind of quit because the fandom was so friggin' annoying. They were really obnoxious, um, especially after the whole Szechuan sauce McDonald's debacle. Like, that really, really ruined the, the show for me. Um, but... Yeah, got this game, and it's fine. You know, it's just like a, a move your pieces around kind of strategy game, I guess. I don't know how you would really describe it, but I had a decent enough time. It's Cryptozoic, who does most of the uh, Cartoon Network games, and yeah, I don't know if I'd really recommend it, but I feel like I could probably get another play from it someday. So, hopefully... Ooh. All right, I am going to, um, let's see, what time is it? I've been going for about, about an hour. So I'm going to take a quick break, rearrange some of the stuff underneath, and probably rearrange some of the stuff on top real quick, and then keep going in just a minute. So I will be back in just a bit. Don't go anywhere. Don't touch that internet dial. I will be back to organize more board games in just a couple minutes. All right, see you then.
Okay. Mm. I am back. Ah, refreshed. Need some water. Um. Let's see. I think I should probably move the mark, the camera a little bit. Whoop. It is a wide, wide angle lens. Huh. Yeah, I've been scooting back a little bit as I go. Whatever. Um. Oh, and yeah, let me refresh the Twitch chat. Okay. So, uh, got everything kind of tucked away a little bit nicer, which is uh, a, a little, a little better. And then, yeah, we're going to crack into another, another gray box. So let's get into that. Ooh. Another one of these guys. And so this one will definitely fit now. Fossilis, which has another foil cover, nice gold foil. Uh, this one I got because it's like a big old plastic tray kind of thing. You can kind of see it there. It's like a big old plastic thing with plastic tiles, and the tiles themselves are like the nicest part. They're just super chunky, and they feel really good, like almost like candy-like, honestly. Um, game itself, real complicated, so I don't get a lot of play of it, but... Um, played it once, had a fun enough time. It's just like, yeah, a lot of rules, a lot of really hard to uh, remember rules, honestly. So <clears throat> that's Fossilis. Then a similarly shaped one, Catan, just vanilla Catan. I mean, you've probably played it. Like, it's this is the like I don't play Monopoly. I play games like Catan game. Which yeah, that's it was the first the first like euro game that i got and i don't regret it i almost never play it because it's like i've played it so much now on different apps and stuff and it's fine it just comes down to luck of the rolls at a certain point and like that's okay but there's a lot of better games out there honestly even as an introduction to euro games Catan's not great i'd say like carcassonne village king domino those are all like way better introductions to Euro games than um, Catan is, but I digress. Uh, it's interesting, it does still say Cat the settlers of Catan and not just plain Catan, which is, I think, just because I got it long enough ago, back in like 2013, I want to say. I don't remember. What's next? Uh, not that one gonna get Monster Crunch which I already talked about and maybe Carcassonne no Carcassonne's much too wide so I'm gonna try and fit this Five Nights at Freddy's survive till 6 a.m. game there's another FNAF game that's like um it's like a crocodile dentist kind of jump scare game where you're just you're trying to grab the pizzas and if you grab oh no he screams at you that seems cute but I don't have one um this is pretty simple you know, it's trying to emulate the actual game, power management, try and stay safe from the animatronics, all that stuff. But, uh, yeah, haven't played it yet. It's a fun co-game. Um, it seems like one of those games that's actually just solitaire that they're like, well, you can play it with another person, so it's not really solitaire. It's solitaire. Don't listen to them, those fun co-people. I, mean, I brought this microfiber cloth and everything, and I still keep dusting stuff with my hands. I feel a fool. There's still a little bit of room in that one, so I might tuck something else in it. But uh, yeah, that's the second of the gray cubes. Let's keep going. Um, let's get let's get Carcassonne in that one. Carcassonne, classic. Already talked about it. Um. Ah, both of my villainous expansions. I have Perfectly Wretched, which comes with uh, Pete, you know, from like the old like Steamboat Willie, Corolla de Vil, and Mother Gothel, and uh, Evil Comes Prepared, which is Ratigan, who's one of my favorites, Scar and Yzma. Um, yeah, played a little bit of the expansions. I haven't played a lot of Villainous in general. I'd like to play more. I like the game a lot, but, you know, 
it's a bit involved and you always have to learn some new rules and that's that's a bit of a barrier to entry. Uh, those are the only two I have. I know there's two others. Haven't gotten a chance to them yet because I think the other one that they had that has uh, like Hades. You know, I like Hades. I love Dr. Facilier, so I'd love to have him. But I don't really care so much about the Evil Queen. Although I hear she's like one of the funnest ones, so I don't know. And then there's the new one that has like Gaston and uh other people. I don't know. There's there's always jokes about, you know, who they're going to put in next. I want Sharpay from High School Musical. That's my hot take. I think she'd be a great villainous villain. But, you know, that's just me. Ah. What's next? Mm, Targi. Targi is one of my favorite games. I play it mostly on Board Game Arena. It's a two-player game, you know, worker placement kind of thing. It has this great mechanic where you put your guys along the edges, right? You put your guys along the edges, and then where they intersect. So, like, you know, I'm trying to do this in the camera. So, where they intersect, so if it goes across like that, you get that action as well. That's a cool mechanic, and I really enjoy that one. Um... Hmm. Actually, I think I'll save that for a different one. Let's see. Hmm. I could fit Vast, but... Huh. Do I want Vast in there? Oh, well, well. Hmm. No. Hmm. The thing is, I also have a shelf over here. Not a large shelf, but a shelf. Where I'm going to probably put most of my leader games. Definitely Root. Um, but I move stuff so that I could dust, basically. And I have all those games over here. But, uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of what I'll put over there. Um, oh. Uh, tucked back here. Monk Hollow Board. I could actually take it out of here because it's a folding, a folding one, and it would take up a lot less space, you know, just Moncala with the beads. If you haven't played Moncala, I highly recommend it. It's one of those classic games that just like, it takes 10 minutes to play, it takes like two seconds to learn, it's so simple, but it's like, just, it's great. I played this all the time as a kid, and I, I, I love it, it's one of my favorites. Um, whoop. maybe like this. There we go. Nice. All right, I got a little more room. I could probably fit one more larger game. Hmm. Honestly, I think Cascadia. Yes, I'm leaving Cascadia out for now because I said I was going to punch the pieces. Um, but I will leave that space for Cascadia. So that makes this one done. And we have another gray cube. Let me refresh the Twitch chat. There we go. Being very careful not to touch the end stream button, which is right below the Twitch chat. Refresh. Oh. Getting a little sweaty, a little bit. It's hot lights, you know, so that's just how it is. Oh boy, let me get some water. Okay. What next? Put my smaller games in. So we got Welcome to, which is not sitting flat. Let me see if I can fix that. Yeah, the cards all are trying to escape. So let's fix that. This is a, uh, well, not really a roll and write, but a draw and write game. So 
basically like Yahtzee. Super fun, real love it. You're just building like a little neighborhood based on specific criteria. And yeah, it's just a, a ton of fun. One of my favorites. Uh, we can put Targi in there with that because they're the same size. Then we have King Domino, which looks like a preschool game. Super colorful and chunky and like very little kitty, right? But actually a very fun game. You basically just like drop down different dominoes and like claim them and you get different scores based on like multiplication, which is more than kids can really do necessarily. And uh, yeah, got the Spiel des Jahres in 2017, which is like the the like Oscar board games basically. And uh, it's Bruno Cathala. So, you know, he's he's done some really fun stuff. I really love his work. Uh, I feel like the camera has like drifted upwards a little bit. There we go, that's, that's a better framing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, that's fine, that's fine. <laughs> And then we have the only expansion for Time Stories. I've gotten the Marcy case, which was the first expansion. Um, yeah, haven't haven't cracked into it because the the first the thing is it takes so long. It was like a five hour game. It says ninety minutes per session. That's nonsense. It's super long, and it's like trying to be kind of an escape room thing, but it really doesn't work as an escape room thing. We'll crack into this eventually. It's just like. Man, I don't know. You know what? The original Time Stories, though, I could do on stream sometime. I... I'd have to figure out how to, like, frame it all correctly. And, obviously, I'd have to label it as, like, spoilers. But I would run through the whole thing. And it's been long enough now that I don't feel like... that. I don't feel that bad about spoiling it, you know? I'll, I'll be sure to say, like, I'm going through the whole story. You guys have plenty of time to, you know, go play it for yourself. But, uh, yeah, it's been quite a while. Oof. 12 hours, my goodness. Oh, my gosh. I, I can't imagine playing for that long. I, like, I, I love board games, and I play them all the time, but, like, that would be so exhausting after a while. Oh, I, I feel for you. Um, whoop, what do we have next? Silk. Silk is a, uh, it's a pretty fun game. It's like, it's these, like, silkworms that you're farming and you're trying to get plenty of stuff out of them. It's got, like, this big dog with horns and, like, a creature. Um, it's quite scary. Uh... It's okay. It's kind of fiddly the way it works, but it's a fun puzzle. You know, I, I'd i say, like, definitely try it out before you get it. I like it a lot, and the colors alone, like, very pretty. Um, but, yeah, I don't know if I'd necessarily recommend it to anyone. Not because it's bad, but just because it's, like, uh, it's, it's a very acquired taste, let's say. What next? Honestly, I have a lot of space. I have a lot more space than I thought I would. Uh, let's pop out the smaller cubes for like the, the card games and such. Because like I'm realizing now that I've put so many of them into the big cubes, the, the big storage bins, that I have way more space in these guys, which is a great, great thing. Like, I'm not complaining, but that definitely changes my strategy here. Whoop. Yeah, we got these really shallow ones. I'm always checking at the Dollar Tree for more of the, the tall ones, like those gray ones, like this guy. But they just never have them anymore. The best they got is these guys, which aren't bad, but they're, like, not what I'm looking for. Okay, um, actually, if I twist these... Like so, yes, that still gives me plenty of room. So, right outside of frame, cool. Um, let me get some more water. Uh, 
Oh boy. Hmm. Ah, this game, this game, as you may notice, is still in the plastic. This is Cool Cats and Ass Hats. It's a party game. Got it for free at PAX Unplugged. Like, literally, we were in line, and they were just like, we're just giving out this game for free. It's a friend of mine's. And I was like, sure. And I, like, got a copy, but I've never taken out the plastic. Looks like a kind of crappy, like, iteration on, um... Cards Against Humanity, basically. Doesn't look that interesting, but it was free. So, hung on to it. Tuck that right there. Actually, let's put it on the cool cat side. Because sometimes a child goes through these games and they don't need to see a card with a butt on it. Ah, Stuff and Nonsense, the Professor Elemental game. This is interesting. It uses cards, but it's basically a board game. The cards just form, like, the spaces you move on. And it's like a set collection game. You know, very, very straightforward set collection game. But just, I love the pieces. I love the aesthetic. Love the uh, the artwork. And I love Professor Elemental. He's, like, one of my favorite musicians. Love his attitude. Super positive. And, yeah, it's a pretty fun game. So, I'd recommend it. Chocobo's Crystal Hunt. This one apparently is kind of rare. I was looking it up on Amazon, and I got it at like uh, um, at Ancient City Con, which is in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, which we went to see uh, Aurelio Voltaire, which was an awesome show, super fun. But uh, yeah, someone at a booth had this, which is, I believe, the Japanese version. I'm not sure, but I got it for like a reasonable price. Maybe a little much for a card game. I think it was like 30 bucks, but like it goes for quite a bit now. Uh, as far as games go, it's fine. It's like old made, basically, but with a chocobo um, aesthetic. Artwork is really, really cute. And I'm not a huge like Final Fantasy fan or anything, but my roommate is, and I like a chocobo. Look, look at this little chicken. Are you telling me you don't like that chicken? I like that chicken. That's a good chicken, right there. Right there. That's a good chicken. Anyways, getting off track. Um, Sugar Ponies got this at a uh, Pax Unplugged. They had it at the table. Um, Certifiable Studios. I don't know what main game they do. Apparently, this was an April Fool's joke. I guess so. They actually didn't think it was that good. It's like a trick-taking game. It's kind of like War. It's fine. I you know. I don't, I don't necessarily like the artwork very much. I think it looks a little silly. And then they made another one, which I would have gotten, but, you know, I don't think they actually produced it. Because, again, April Fool's joke. Very mean-spirited, kind of, because they're just like, oh, it's so stupid. Ugh, girl stuff, ponies. And it's like, chill out, guys. Come on. It's real mean. Uh, let's see. Dale Merchants. The original um, don't have any of the sequels yet but really fun this one again um, like tiny sword smash it's like anytime we play it it's fun but the first like half of the game is just like relearning the cards and like once you remember all the cards you get some awesome combos and stuff but like just that that process of remembering them is like kind of tedious and so it's not a bad it's not a bad game, but it's uh, a game you'd want to really get into and play often so that you remember the cards. I don't think it's one you just want to play on occasion, you know? I'm putting them to the side because I want to make sure I can, like, fit stuff in correctly. Tiny Epic Dinosaurs! Uh, love this. Super great worker placement game. Uh, love the tiny dinosaur meeples awesome awesome stuff and look at this artwork look at these babies cute cute little dinos love that uh it's my first tiny epic game i want to get more i've i've streamed playing this like a bunch so you know just go to iggy kid twitch archive on youtube and you can see me playing this definitely recommend it super cute game love it um pass the pigs classic it's, uh, I think I have the Mattel version? Milton Bradley version. It's just a dice game, you know? 
It's just got that. It's a roll and write. Uh, you know, it's just got a score pad and pencils. These little rubber pig dice, depending on how they roll. You know, you get different points. Whatever. Pretty simple roll and write. I mainly got it because my grandma always had a copy um, because she runs a pig sanctuary in Washington State, which is super cool. Um, but yeah, it's more for nostalgia purposes. I got it for super cheap at like a thrift shop, uh, 99 cents, I think something, whatever. I'm glad I have it in my collection and similar to Moncala, I could just take it out of the box, but I like the box. So I'll hang on to it for now. Um, playing cards. This might be going in the front room. Ah, uh, yeah, this is just a box of different playing cards I have. You know, Bicycle Steampunk. Um, bicycle Flying Machines. Uh, Fallout, which I got, they have those, like, Garbo, like, Loot Crate uh, boxes you can buy for, like, 20 bucks at a Walmart. And th these came in that. They're really, really crappy. But you got the vault logo and, like, a pretty neat aesthetic. But they're just, like, yeah, not very good cards. What actually is the manufacturer of this? I don't know. Um, Norwegian Cruise Line cards. I don't even know if that's a full deck. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street cards. One of those ones that has like pictures from the movies. You know, not super high quality cards, I don't think. Aquarius. Yeah, Aquarius cards are pretty garbage, but whatever. And Uno, classic Uno, pretty beat up old deck. But if you play an Uno right, if you have a family set of Uno, it's going to get beat up. And that's a good thing. That's a well-loved deck. Classic. I will tuck these somewhere else. I don't know. I think they should really go with the board games necessarily, but I'm not going to like throw them out or anything. Ooh, what else? Hanabi! Hanabi is a great co-op game. It's just like... It, it's basically a card game, but you play with your hand facing everybody else, and all of the rules are based on what you're actually allowed to tell people, so you're all working together. It's Antoine Bauza, who I'm a huge fan of, and yeah, it's one of the few like, actually really great co-op games. A lot of co-op games are just like solitaire but you all play it together and they it's solitaire where you split up the information between a bunch of people and you play it together and sometimes there's like a traitor and people aren't very good at being traitor so i prefer something like this with really controlled information and communication then we get into the oink game startups startups is one of my top three favorite games i love startups Real simple, like, set collection game. So, it's so quick, so fun, real cute art. Love the production. Yeah, Oink Games. Great stuff. This is this is a great, great game. Can I fit it perfectly? Yes. Yes. That, that pleases my brain that I can fit it perfectly between these two. Uh... Between these two, you can't see it, but I can fit them perfectly, which is good. Uh, Moon Adventure Special Edition. This came from the Kickstarter. If you play DC Adventure, it's basically that push your luck, but this is more co-op, and it's a little more complex because there's like different roles you can play. Doko Jong. This one is another old maid sort of, or no, this is like a bluffing game where you're trying to like figure out where people have different uh, dogs they've hidden hidden dog game in a grove this is like a deduction game where you're trying to figure out like who did a murder and it's like you're trying to figure out what's the lowest number but you don't none of you has all of the information you're just trying to like figure it out from each other that's like all my oink games but there's like a spot here that would be perfect for one more oh you know what sugar ponies fits there perfectly right yes yes sugar ponies fits right in there awesome gonna flip this around so that 
Yeah, there we go. So that the uh, the little tab that you would hang it on at the store tucks right between these two games. Mmm. Mmm, that's fitting together very nicely. Yeah, I like that. You know what? I'm actually going to put this over here because Hanabi gives it a little more space. Chocobo's Crystal Hunt next to that? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Can I fit Dale of Merchants right there? No, it's a little too long. Dang, oh, that would have been so nice. Uh, maybe I could fit No Coast Dice. No Coast Dice is a, uh, it's a trick taking game, but you use uh, cards and dice and like the, the trump suit changes every time. And this, does this one have hiragana? A little bit. I don't know all of them though. Ta, wa, ru, uh. That fits right there. Perfect. Ugh. Nice. Nice tight setup. Oop, Sugar Ponies is peeking out a little bit there. But yeah, that is a nice tight box of games. Love it. Um, hmm. I'll just put it on the table. Right over here. That'll be safe there. Ah, uh, swing over to this. Stale Merchants will be the first one in that. Next up is Minecraft card game? Question mark. Haven't played it yet, just got a little bit ago. Haven't even edited the unboxing for this yet. But uh definitely will play it. Doubt it'll be as good as Builders and Biomes necessarily, but you know, quick fun. Card game? Question mark. I'm confused why it's why it's questioning that it's a card game. Because it's a game you play with cards, so it is a card game. I don't know. Maybe that's more apparent when you play it. Um Trivial Pursuit Steel this is one of the ones my roommate's ex-wife left. So, you know, none of us really like it. You know, I had a decent enough time playing it, but, like, I know a ton of useless trivia. So it just all worked out in that way. Um, this one is going to go outside with the family games. Um, Uh, Blockbuster! This is the Blockbuster board game. It's just like movie trivia. It's really kind of disappointing. The funnest part is that it comes in like a big, you know, VHS clamshell with a sticker on the side that's like, you know, new item like they would have a Blockbuster. That's kind of cute. Oh, and it's a big potato game. I like big potato games quite a bit. But yeah, it's it's fine. It's just like movie trivia, whatever. Um, that will go out. Uh, categories, y'all know categories, whatever party game. Annapurna, this is another one we tried out at the PAX Unplugged 2018 when we went there. Um, this is actually Coco's, so I will probably put it out with the other games out there. Uh, but it's a card game. It's sort of like a solitaire game. You can kind of affect each other, but um, yeah, it's real fun. It's just about mountain climbing and stuff. It's got some cool printed meeples and stuff. Um, yeah, not a lot more to say about that. It's just... Real cool. This is one of those ones where there's like almost nothing actually in this box and it could have been a much smaller box, but maybe there'll be expansions and stuff, you know? So it's good to have space for all of that. Uh, oh yeah, and this, which is just like on the table back there. This is two Binding of Isaac like neoprene card mats for four souls. Way too big, way too big, it's huge. And I have two of them, which I got in that Kickstarter, so I don't know what to do with them. I don't know. It's basically just have them for fun, I guess. Wait a minute, can I... 
<laughs> the tube falls out. Great. <laughs> I don't know. I'll tuck this back here for now. Um. Let's talk about Abba. Uh, don't get got. The Shut and Down Sit Down Special Edition just got this recently. It was a Kickstarter. It's specifically the Shut and Sit Down Special Edition. And it's a game where basically you all have little goals, like their examples are like, get a player to ask to see your ID and show them the card instead. Like, stuff like that. I'm only saying the examples on here because I don't want to spoil anything, but like, you basically do that, but if they're like, is this part of the game? Then you fail it. So, um, I'm planning at some point to get set up with my roommates with this so that we can all just be kind of a little paranoid around each other, which I think is the healthiest way to live with a family. I don't know. Could be wrong on that. Let's tuck this in here. Another copy of Welcome To. You know, uh, my grandma accidentally bought me two because she got me the other one. It's still in shrink wrap. I'm trying to sell it, but because it's not like a game that's in short supply, nobody wants to buy it. So, whatever. Scott Pilgrim's Precious Little Card Game. One of the first games that I recognized was bad. Not a good game. Cannot play it. It actually, the way the rules are written, it's impossible to play. Oh, jeez, there's a fly. You might have seen that. There's a fly on my camera. Get out of here. Hey, get out of here. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, not a good game. Also, way too big a box. The actual game fits into, like, right here. I, I have so much to say about this, but it's a bad game. Trying to sell it. Played it once, so not even played it once. I, like, shuffled the deck one time. <sighs> but nobody wants to buy it because, yeah, it wasn't a good game. So that's another one. Star Trek, the original series, Road Trip. Road Trip is a game made by Aquarius, who makes those crappy cards. Um, it's basically like Monopoly, but... It's like Monopoly meets Talisman. You go around the outside, and then there's like another track that goes the opposite direction around the inside, and you're trying to get like specific goals. The thing is, most of the cards are still road trip themed in here. So, yeah. I got this from a friend, and I played it once. It was fine. I'm seeing, you know, trying to see if anybody buy it, but again, you know, it's not like a rare game or anything, so nobody really cares. I enjoyed it fine the first time. It just kind of feels like something between risk and um somewhere between risk and monopoly and talisman and it's it's just kind of tedious you know so whatever poker set got this at like a thrift store i mostly just use it because it has a bunch of like felt chunks that you can slap on a table uh, it's got like, you know, the crappy little plastic chips and like a crappy set of set of cards. <laughs> I love the picture that we got here of just like a random group of people at home and he's got like a big cigar like he's at the like he's at the, the casino. Again, I just hang on to it for the felt, which it's decent enough felt. It's always like creased and everything. But better than playing on plain table, you know? Oh, I'm talking a lot. Mm, my throat's a bit raw. That's all right. It's not too bad. Not too bad. All right. Hmm. Apples to apples mod. It's just like a a mobile version, effectively. You know, it yeah. slides out like this. Has this little green letter dice. Eh, I can't even get it out right now, but it, yeah, it's just apples to apples. It's probably the nicest version that you'll get, and I think I got it at a thrift store for fairly cheap quite a while ago. Um, so, never really play it, but that's, I, I hang on to it because it's apparently kind of rare now. You know, Not that it's like more valuable, it's just hard to find that version, and that's the only version I'd ever want, so... Dragon Whisperer. This is like a trick-taking game, I'm pretty sure. 
I got it from the same friend as that um, Star Trek game. Seems fun enough. Just like haven't had a chance to play it yet. Uh, it he got it from an abandoned hospice, like an abandoned children's hospice. So it might be haunted. I can't say for sure, um, but mm, might be fun. It's it's one of those games. I don't think this is on Board Game Geek. It's like so obscure, which is, you know, concerning. But whatever. Uh, go. It's just a go set. You know, folding magnetic board, little magnetic pieces. Not a great set, but I want to have at least one set of go. I want to get a like a nice go board at some point, but that's they're expensive, so I can't. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Like this, maybe? That'll probably be good. Um, the metagame. The metagame is basically like Cards Against Humanity, where you just get a bunch of like, you just get a bunch of generic things like the spork, lasers, and like other things. So it's two different types of cards with random stuff on them. And there's like seven different games you can play. If you get it, I'd recommend the Meta Quilt. That's the funnest because it just starts up a bunch of like heated arguments about stuff that doesn't matter, which is my favorite kind of argument. I, I have a ton of fun arguing about stuff that's unimportant. Um, but yeah, the other games in it, I don't know, some of them are fun. That's 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 the winner. Uh, Uno Corns is just a version of Uno that has unicorns, different unicorn art. And there's like a rule that if you play a wild, you gotta like s stick it to your forehead like a unicorn horn, I guess. I don't know, we never play with that rule. We just play like Uno. Uh, is this gonna fit in here? Hang back on that one. Ah, yes. Tsssssf. Uh, this is Twilight Sparkles Secret Ship Fic Folder. It's um, it's a game that's more or less a parody of. Ooh, careful, this is another one that is Coco, so I don't want to be too rough with it. But it's a game making fun of fanfics, basically, and you're like connecting different characters with different ships, and you're trying to fulfill goals. It's like a party game. It's pretty fun. You know, the artwork is super cute. I like the system a lot. I think it'd be better if they included things outside of My Little Pony, which is, you know, Twilight Sparkle, My Little Pony stuff. Uh, I think the system would work really well for a ton of different fandoms, so... I don't know. I th It's kind of open source now because they, you know, they, they got C and D, so they can't produce it anymore, unfortunately. Um, but we have a copy, and yeah, we uh, don't play it a ton anymore, but we probably should sometime. It's it's fairly fun. Ah, here we go. Uh, these are meeples that came with the deluxe edition of Vast, so just some wooden pieces. And this is one of my games that I did for a game jam, uh, well, a game design contest called Potluck. It was a Haba game design contest. That's why it's got all these big chunky wooden pieces. Um, I, I, I want to flesh this out someday, I think. But I, I hang on to it. It's just the prototype. But, you know, it's there. And similarly, we have uh, targets, targets and toadstools, I think I called it. Targets, tricks, and toadstools, which is a bluffing game that was for the Nunpub Haba Game Jam, and I actually did a design diary for that one back on um, back on my YouTube channel, so you can go check that out. I am pretty happy with it. I think it's a pretty fun game, and I, I like what I was able to do with it, so I don't know if I'll ever uh, revisit it necessarily, but I think that's pretty, pretty cool. I made a game. That's fun. Flux, specifically Stoner Flux, which, I don't know, that's the version we got. Flux says, is one of those ones like Monopoly that has a bajillion different versions, and this is the one that we we have played it once or twice. Um, you know, there's some d different things with Flux in general that I'm like, eh, it's a little underwhelming, but it's fun enough. If someone asked me to play Flux, I'd be like, yeah, let's let's give it a go. 
Um, hmm. I should get some more water. Ah, uh, about halfway down now. Okay. Um, what else we got? Uno flip, which I'd probably play over Uno corns, because it's got flip cards that when you flip it, it goes to the other side of the cards. And those ones are harsher penalties, so it's like a little bit interesting. Still just Uno. And Uno's another game where like I never get tired of it. So like if someone's like, let's play Uno, I'm like, yeah, sure, let's play Uno. It's fast enough and it's interesting enough. Put that there. Unstable unicorns. I like the art on this, but I don't like the graphic design. Every card like explains the entire rules it's like a paragraph of text and you read through like half of it before you realize like oh no I've read this before this is a waste of my time so that's frustrating pop it out pop it out but it's fun enough you know it's um, it's like a set collection game as well and I enjoy, or actually, wait, no, this should go with the family stuff over there. Um, yeah, I enjoy it fine enough, but it's like, it's not exceptionally interesting. Ah, and after talking about Uno, Dos! We got Dos, which Dos is my most viewed um, whiteboard games video, so go check that out. I, I'm pretty proud of it. I think it was a very fun video, and... Yeah, uh, I kind of prefer this. It's more like casino, kind of a set collection pair thing. Um, so I think, you know, I definitely prefer this to Uno, but it's uh, it's definitely more for the gimmick of like, haha, we made dose. It's like, yeah, sure. It's fine. It's nothing too offensive. And I think I can fit Uno in there. And there's like a space right here that's kind of awkward. Um. Mm. This is the uh, uh, the not safe for work expansion for Unstable Unicorns. So that's tuck that away. Granted, it's not even in the box anymore. That's just an empty box. But you know, keep that hidden from child eyes. Um, can't fit this in. Nope. Hmm. What else can I do with this? Um, I guess I'll jam this in there. Why not? Yeah, I think they'll do it for this one. And I can stack them, thankfully. Um. All right. Down to these last two. And I got like more overhead space in this one. Um. Let's see. All right, boss monster. The uh, the next level. This is a second boss monster game. And yeah, boss monster is fine, but the big thing is once you've played it a couple times, you've seen all the cards and it gets a little dull. So the expansions I would highly recommend after you've played boss monster a couple times. Um, I have the, that, that was the original right after it. The Science and Seance Society, which is a New Mill Industries game. I really love New Mill Industries. They, uh, their Kickstarters are great because they basically, they do it, fully fund it, and then they have it out to you in a couple months. Great turnaround. Very good quality productions. Highly recommend New Mill Industry games. Um, Science and Seance Society is like an asymmetrical game. One of you is playing with dice, one of you is playing with cards, and you're trying to like summon or unsummon a beast. The second New Mill Industries game, Rivet Heads, which I'm a little more excited for because it's cyberpunk, which is one of my favorite things. And 
it's got their logo now. It's one of those cool logos where, like, no matter which way you turn it, it says New Mill. I mean, it kind of says New Mill. It's really hard to read because they were so focused on making it do that. Um, but, yeah, that one is tucked in there, too. Steven Universe, Beach of Palooza card battling game. Another Cryptozoic game. Um, this one they I got because they were not planning on restocking it, and they did out of the blue, so I was like, well, I love Steven Universe, so I guess I'll grab a copy. And uh, is it good? I don't know. I haven't actually played it yet, but I, uh, I'm i glad I got a copy because there's not really going to be an opportunity to do that again. So... I don't think it can fit in any of these, so this is going to have to go on the shelf. Um, and of course, what kind of a tabletop gamer would I be without a bag full of other bags? And those bags are full of RPG dice. Raw. I bought these this is like one of those big sets that's like a bajillion RPG dice for like 20 bucks so I bought them for Coco we don't actually end up using them that much but we have a ton of RPG dice around you know, for all sorts of stuff the ones I have are uh, tucked over that way but yeah bunch of velvet bags this will go with the components kind of stuff so toss them on this table um, oh yeah, and a bag of glass beads. I don't like, I don't like the uh, the color of these beads. They're just like kind of a brown, whatever. But like, it's good to have these for different things. Duct tape and dice, the essentials of every household. Yeah, I know that's true. I got I got more than enough of both. Actually, I don't even know if I have that much duct tape right now. Haven't needed that much. Uh, I got a lot of masking tape, though, which is always useful. Um, hmm. Ah, another part of Neroshima Hex. Um, this is just, like, a bunch of single-player scenarios and, like, a tile to do that with. That could go on top of there. Um, hmm. probably gonna keep all my leader game stuff on the shelf over there tapeworm fit in here right yeah okay both of those can fit in there so this is tapeworm it's Edmund McMillan who made super meat boy uh, both the you know the card game and the video game um, and binding of Isaac Right, the Binding of Isaac card game, not the Super Meat Boy part game, what am I saying? But he made Tapeworm, which is just like a, a fun color match kind of game. I have a ton of fun with it. I kickstarted it, so it has the foil one, and because of the Kickstarter, I also have... Well, you can read that for yourself, but uh, that's the not safe for work version. And because the game involves uh, connecting and cutting apart Tapeworms... You can probably guess how uncomfortable that other one gets, but I digress. Um, hmm. I'm almost done here, I think. Let's see. Taking these ones out. That fly is still here. Um, Stadia is still separate. These are all going on the shelf. Oh yeah, uh, one I'm leaving out for right now is a Choose Your Own Adventure War with the Evil Power Master. I'm gonna actually set this up because it's there's no hidden information to play uh, by text with my family. I'll just like take pictures and like send it to them and they can vote on where we're gonna go. So that'll be fun. Uh, I'm gonna set that up probably tomorrow at some point. It's just gonna have to be a semi-permanent fixture because it'll probably take weeks waiting for everybody to, you know, weigh in and everything. So. War with the Evil Power Master. Nice. Uh, that one specifically, you know, I don't know, but I love sci-fi stuff. I love this guy with the the evil face and the scary hair and the elf ears and everything and all these cool alien designs along the side. Um, yeah. 
yeah, super excited to, to crack into that one. Um, I think we're almost done. I'm going to take one more break and then we're going to be in the home stretch. I only got a handful of more games that I got to organize. And I might be standing up for the last bit, so I might adjust the camera and everything. But uh, don't go anywhere. Don't touch the internet dial. I'll be right back to finish this all up. See you soon. Okay, I'm back. Ah, home stretch here. Um, yeah, I think I can fit everything in these last few. Let's see. I'm putting over... Okay, these are the games I'm not taking out. Or the ones that I'm going to fit onto um, the shelf over here. I have more vertical space, so I think I can fit everything into all these boxes. Um, this right here is a oop, and the box is a little broken unfortunately but I was at a um a random little thrift store in Nebraska where my mom lives um and it's these dom these wooden dominoes with like these hand like well no not hand painted but like these these adorable little like barnyard things 
and it's in this nice wooden box so I'm not necessarily gonna use it but I was like they only wanted like a few cents for it so I was like yeah I'll buy that Are you kidding I don't know the lid won't go back on uh, yeah the box is not in great shape but it's like the main reason I have it is because of the box so So that will go on the shelf as well. Um, Uno corns. Uno corns can go with the uh, family stuff. Um, ah, here are some like replacement cards for tapeworm because they they messed up the printing a little bit, so they had to include the replacement cards. Mistakes happen, you know. It's not a problem. Uh, yep, the meeples again. Which I'll just, like, stick on top, I suppose. Um. That's pretty much it for the stuff I'm not going to put on the shelf or keep out. So I'll just kind of, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of show off the games I'm not putting on the shelf. And I'll put all the, actually, I will put all the ones that are going to go out in, like, the living room into this box. I think they should fit. Um, maybe not sorry. I don't think that one's going to fit. But Animals Upon Animals. Annapurna. Blockbuster game. Whoops, can't fit sideways quite. Or maybe this way? I don't know if it's square. Nope, not enough room. Blockbuster game. I think this stack of uh, card games. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Stable unicorns. Uno corns. All this business. And Jenga and such. All right, and then there's like sorry and everything, but that won't fit in here. Okay, yeah, that pretty much does it. Um, this is gonna have to go back on a shelf as well because it's just too long, but I'm getting the big boy box, as I said, so I'll be able to fit all of them in there. And uh, yeah, I don't know how big it is, but it's called the big boy box. So it's probably very big for a big boy who has a big boy box. Uh, it's hard not to look over at myself constantly. I'm not used to having like an actual monitor for video. Um, okay. So yeah, I'm gonna just kind of talk about the ones that are going onto shelves. So we have most of my leader games, including Fort. Fort is a uh, deck building game that I really enjoy. It's got great pieces, just like all leader games. Love the Cal Farron artwork. Like his artwork is always great. And this this kid over here, that's supposed to be a kid version of Grant Rodiek, the designer, presenting the game to you, which is very, very cute. Um, and there are other cards in here that are like supposed to be the other people, you know, like Kyle Farron's in there, Patrick Leader's in there, like just all sorts of cute little Easter eggs tucked away in there. Um, highly recommend that one. And I pre-ordered the uh, expansion which adds cats and dogs and that should be fun too then we have vast the mysterious manor which is one of my heaviest games and it's a, a huge box very hefty and thick and it's it's mostly like miniatures 
<laughs> on the the bottom third of this. But uh, yeah, this game's pretty fun. I've played it mostly on TTS at this point, but I got it in a bundle that came with you know these meeples and uh, some uh, uh, the the expansion, Haunted Hallways, which I already showed off. Let's see, are you Cascadia? Ah, and then Root. I have every Root expansion. The cave version more because of the theme. I see. I'm the opposite. I'm not a huge fan of fantasy. Like some fantasy stuff, I'm I can get into, but most of it I find kind of samey. Um, Root being an example. Like Root is a fantasy property I like. Uh, but Mysterious Manor I like a little more because it's fantasy with a spooky edge. That's the thing. If it's just straight fantasy, I'm like, eh. But if it has like a little little twist, like spooky or like cute animals or something, goblins. I do. I gotta say, I do love the goblins. Uh, I like skeletons a little more than goblins, but I I do I do like the idea of goblins. So I can totally agree with you there. So yeah, Root, the Clockwork Expansion, which I haven't cracked into, but I'll probably play this on stream at some point, along with a bunch of other solitaire games. Um, the Underworld Expansion, which is quite hefty because I have, uh, I have the Underworld Expansion and the River Folk Expansion in this box, which unfortunately, the corner got all busted up. My copy. Skeletons are hella cool. That's very true. I've I've played some vast solo as well on here, so you could probably check that out. Um, the solo mode in vast, at least the the uh, the mysterious manner, is pretty solid. It's it's pretty tricky. Uh, but yeah, underworld expansion. It has you know both of the new boards and all of the the various expansion things. But yeah, I it got dropped or something. I had to tape this back up. Sad sad day for that. Uh, and I did, I did kickstart for like the highest tier of all the new stuff for, um, the Marauder expansion. So that'll be coming sometime. I'll have to find space for that. <laughs> Board games. Board games. I have so many. River Folk expansion. Uh, this box is empty, but I keep it in there because it's a beautiful box. So why would you ever throw that away, you know? Uh, surprising since the root boxes are so thick. Um, not sure what that's in response. I think to make them fit. Uh, yeah, I I took out the I took out the insert. The original insert I won't take out because it's nice and molded and everything. But the inserts and the expansions are just cardboard. So I just tossed the cardboard uh, thing, and I can fit both of those expansions into that one box torn oh the torn edge yeah um when i got it i put it on top of like my key my piano keyboard and after a couple minutes it slid off like right onto that edge and god i still feel so bad about it it's so tragic but it's fine it tapes back together just fine and it's held up so far so ah uh, yeah a real tragedy especially because i had to wait so long for that one uh, oh, well, I digress. And then, of course, we have the original Root, which I believe this is the second printing. But yeah, Root, before Oath came out, was my favorite game. And it's still up there, like, top three. Love this game so much. I'd play it any time. I play a lot of the digital version now because the, the physical version takes a while to set up. There's a lot of pieces going around. Ooh, that's casting a shadow. I'll put that back over here. Um, but yeah, I still I love it so much. I play it as often as I can. And it's, it yeah, most of my leader games go over there onto a shelf for display. Um, I'm, I have the Haunted Hallways tucked away in one of these boxes as you probably saw earlier but I'm gonna keep them out there and I'm gonna keep a few of these because they're in you know just odd shapes that won't fit in any of the other boxes all that well but that mostly does it what else do I have oh I almost forgot ah, ah. 
I'm trying to grab him. Cancel. Ah. Some tabletop RPGs. Here's a really fun one. Free Market. Uh, I do not think you can get this kit anymore um, because it was a limited time thing like eight years ago. So probably not going to be able to do that. And it's pretty dinged up. It's got like a little spray adhesive that I didn't protect it well enough from. But this is by Jared A. Sorensen and Luke Crane. Luke Crane, you probably know as the creator of The Burning Wheel. And this is set in a post-scarcity society. So there's no want for anything. No injury is permanent. And it's like, how do you tell a story in that? That's the big question of free market. And it's like a card-based system rather than dice. Um, I, I want to get like a decent campaign of this setup, but it's it's tricky to find like an RPG group that can like wrap their head around it. It's a very like confusing setting, but even I, I can't like, I can't fully wrap my head around the setting, but I hope to one day, you know, I, I hear it's better for like one shots, but I, I want to be able to do some of the campaign stuff. Ah, very interesting. Very, very interesting. And then, um, one of the other things we got from PAX Unplugged uh, 2018. Uh-oh. Okay, that's fine. Um, the Sentinel Comics role-playing game. So it's the Sentinels of the Multiverse role-playing game. Don't really like the artwork, to be honest. I feel I feel like the the artwork for Sentinels of the Multiverse is kind of ugly. Like, look at this guy. I don't like the shading on him at all. Yeah, classic settings are getting really tiresome. Um, I had a campaign going in D&D for a while. Which I'll probably go back to at some point, but D&D is like the least interesting system by like a long shot. Um, so yeah, this is like the starter kit that we got. So it has like a little folding thing. Whoop. Like this. Oh, and a bookmark. Forgot about that. And it has like gameplay guides and I got a bunch of uh, scenario books. You know, they're like different. They're designed to look like the different comics. So I will probably run through these with my roommates at some point when we have time. Because, you know, role-playing games, they're a hefty undertaking. So, someday, someday. Whip, whip, get out of here. And then finally, we have something I really find fascinating, which are Parsley games, starting with Action Castle. So this is by Jared A. Sorensen. I believe, right? Yeah, Jared A. Sorensen uh, with Loot Crane. Again, like Free Market. Um, and it's a text-based adventure game, basically. You have one person DMing as the computer, and the other players take one turn at a time, so they, they get to make one command, and then it goes to the next player, and you basically do a text-based adventure game. So it starts with, Welcome to Action Castle! Uh, you are standing in a small cottage. There is a fishing pole here. Exits are out. Um, and so, yeah, you just run them through it, and you're supposed to respond, you know, with, like, I don't understand, just like the old text adventure games did. Um, so, yeah, I have uh, the original Action Castle, which I believe there's two sequels to. Pumpkin Town, which is like Kids on Halloween. And it's the same kind of system. And then the Mature Z-Ward, that's the zombie one, um, which also comes with an expansion, Z-Ward X, which gives it a basement. Uh, for some reason, they sent me two Z-Ward X, so I've always had two of those. You can get this on uh, itch.io as just like PDFs, which is a fine way to do it. Um, I got these nice, you know, cardstock, glossy versions, but I got them a long time ago. Or you can get uh, all of them in a book, like a bound hardcover book, which I will get at some point. Um, in fact, maybe I should get... <sighs> I need to not spend money. I don't have more space and like, I'm doing well enough financially, but I need to save save money, pay off my debt from, you know, the pandemic. 
But every time I'm just like, well, it's less than $50. And it's like, yeah, but that adds up so fast. Uh, I have a problem. I'm, I'm, be, I'm getting better at it. I might get the PDF versions. I don't know. But yeah, Action Castle. I will do a stream of that in some point. Oh, yeah, the budget. That's, that's the thing is I have almost 100 games. If they average out to about 30 to $40... That means like I have many, th I have like a <laughs> few thousand dollars worth of games and it's like, yikes. I'm, I'm glad I have this collection, but like, woo. And then like, yeah, the other stuff I've gotten to just hold them. Oh man, it's an expensive hobby, but like any gaming is like, I'm sure I've spent thousands on video games over my lifetime, probably tens of thousands on video games. Uh, I do want to run Action Castle at some point on stream. I'd basically just use the chat, um, but I'd need to get enough people involved. Uh, yeah, I can agree with that, CSINT. If you love it, it's good. Yeah, as long as you can afford it. I have a, you know, a bad habit of spending a little more than I probably should, but thankfully I'm in a position where that's not going to be devastating, but... I've been in a situation where that absolutely would have been devastating, so I can totally understand people not being able to afford games. Um, yeah, I don't know. I I wanted if I can get a decent enough chat, but not too much. Action Castle would be very fun to run, but not not right now. Maybe I'll get like actual friends into like a, a voice chat at some point or something. I'm not sure, but uh. Yeah, we'll see someday. But that's, I believe, everything. Yeah, that's that's everything. So that's my whole board game collection. I organized most of it. I can't put all of this away because I'm going to have to put away a couple of these tables and everything. But I want to thank you guys for watching in. My throat is pretty raw because I've been talking this whole time. Um, I expected it to be a much more chill time, but I got a little excited because I just... I love board games. I love showing off all of my fun, fun board games. And, you know, I love playing board games. So I hope to play more on the stream sometime soon. Yeah, thanks for joining, CSINT. Uh, so, yeah, that, that'll that do it for today. Um, so thank you very much for inviting me into your home. You know, your computer, your tablet, your phone, your laptop, your gaming console, Roku, Apple TV, however it is you watch today. I hope I brought some entertainment and levity into your life. I hope you'll join me tomorrow for some Link's Awakening, which I try, again, I'm trying to stream more often. Um, although that depends on if my voice will be able to recover. I got to get some rest. I'm going to rest my voice pretty much the rest of the night after this. Have some, some lozenges. Um... I hope you will consider following and subscribing. Be sure to use your Twitch Prime sub, which if you have an Amazon Prime account, you can connect the two and get one free subscription a month. So I'd appreciate if you considered doing that for me. I hope you'll follow me on Twitter at IggyDKid, where I post up every time I go live, anytime I post a new video, and all sorts of other fun stuff. Um, yes, honey, tea with honey, specifically raw honey, but honey will, will do you. I believe we're at a honey. Ooh. And black tea specifically. Black tea is great for inflammation. So that is very true. Uh, let me... Th what was I saying? Right. Follow me on YouTube. Subscribe. Iggy and the Ape, which is where I post a lot of videos about board games, video games, movies, all sorts of different stuff. Check out the Twitch archive, Iggy Kid. One word. Twitch archive on YouTube. It's linked down below. That has all of my past streams, which are tabletop and video games. Uh, and yeah, a few just chatting kind of things. I did like a Lego set or whatever. I do have another Lego set that I plan to do at some point, but who knows when I'll get a chance to do that. Um, but yeah, that, that'll pretty much do it. Thank you again for watching. And if no one else has said this to you, I'll say this to you. You're a good kid. Thanks for watching. All right, I'm going to go off video but you can still hear me and I'm gonna see if anyone is uh anyone else is streaming right now that I can send y'all over to so let me let me see let me see if anyone else is streaming right now where is twitch there's twitch there's twitch all right let's see 
who is live. Um, Mega sixty four podcast. Eh. Uh, oh, they're doing their own little like convention at their their warehouse. That's cute. Nobody that I could really raid over to though. So whatever. Thanks for thanks for watching everybody. I uh, what the heck? Licking two mics, like just li like ASMR licking mics. Ugh. Grow whatever, whatever. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good night. Thanks for watching. Have a good night. Have a good night. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.